It's that lunchtime thing. Sorry, if it's a little bit late, we've had to hang on. We've got work on outside and we've been drilling. They might start again in any minute, so uh, apologies, but... You know, we're, we're from ready. I'm losing my shed about it, but to be honest, <laughs> I was looking out the window to see where he was to say, like, yeah, mate, I mean, he's been doing it for two days, and all he's doing is, is a little square. It looks like he's putting, like, a fan in or something. Yeah. It's taking ages. Yeah. How long, mate? And, and like, what, what building's that, you know what I mean? It's just like... I don't know. It's like an entry. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know. I don't know what they're up to, but uh, but they're being noisy about it. So apologies if you get a bit. Have you seen the picture of Martin Scale with her? I know it's, it's mad. It freaked me out. Is it real? Know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, the, my first thought was Photoshop. He's not, so he's he's been shaving his head all these years. He's yeah. not actually bald. Well, I don't know because he's got like if you think about it, like there was there was a decent like hair thing there, and he's just been like just cutting it very so very he's short. Going for that hard look, like yeah. But now, now I think he's given up on that. Yeah, he's realised. <laughs> on to it. Yeah, no one, everyone knows you're not that hard, Martin. So, so he's just he's, thought, I'll do this for the missus. So he's got like this. Yeah, I think it looks nice. Do you like it? Yeah. Well, I, I, it's weird. <laughs> it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got it. Anyway, we're not going to do a full thing on it. We didn't buy anyone. We didn't buy Did anyone. Um, that that was no shock, was it? Yeah, I was. I mean, did I, you, did I you sit there watching it. No, I didn't. I didn't see it. I forgot to. Be, I forgot about it to be honest with you, uh, which was quite a nice until um, Paul Senior um, messaged me at about half ten with a uh, Shane Long question mark. <laughs> I think he was making a point of uh, well, would you take him now? Which I still wouldn't. I'm still, you know, I'm a long termist, Paul. You know what I mean? I look at the bigger picture. But um, yeah, we didn't buy anyone. I, th- I thought it was interesting that the. The, the Jürgen Klopp quotes came out bang on 11, which is don't worry, trust us. With mm. you know, I thought it was a bit, and people were I mean, you know more about how the media works than I do. People say how people saying it was embargo thing and it's tomorrow's news, and it just so happens that that comes out at half 10, 11 o'clock. But it, it seemed a little bit deliberate to me, really, because it wasn't stuff he said in the press conference yesterday. So presumably it was said, stuff he said to journalists after, yeah. and they would have known, the club would have known. As part of that, oh, that'll come out to half ten, eleven. When kind of nothing happens. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I, I mean, I, I've worked on on both sides of the fence, both in, in in the press and in PR. Yeah. And so I can see why that's happened from both sides. I mean, yeah. if you're Liverpool, you'll know that all the fans will go. Why didn't you buy someone? Yeah. And so you, you need to say something before that vacuum gets filled by yeah. conjecture. So, so they'll want something to be out there, and from the papers' point of view, they'll want something as well. I mean, you haven't got a signing to lead on. Yeah. So what you do need to lead on is is the manager the or the club yeah. saying something. I mean, I just said to you before, um, you know, Chris Bascombe wrote something in the Telegraph. I haven't clicked the link yet, but I see in the headline, and it's basically saying, "Oh, you'll have a huge budget for the summer." Well, again, that feels like a bit of a sell. Yeah. You know, like, don't worry, we didn't buy anyone this time. But in the summer, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go massive. How yeah. many times have we heard that? Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. you know what? You're Got a war chest. Yeah, you'll you'll be in the pub and someone will say, "I've heard that they're gonna go really much. <laughs> like five or six big big ones in the yeah, summer." Yeah. And then it never it never turns yeah, out that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of uh, money and buying and messages and all the rest of it, there's uh, a lot of ticket talk going around. Gibble. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there was uh, SOS. Obviously, put a statement out last night, pretty scathing about about their dealings with the club, really, and how. And I feel sorry for them because they've they've been in, in put a lot of their own time in about thirteen months of work, you know, with with the club, really. And then obviously from their statement, you can see felt that they've not really been listened to in, in Liverpool Football Club. It's not your SOS. You're working with um, Spiron, the Spiron Cop lads as well, and, supporters and the committee. supporters committee. Three of the supporters committee, you know, put a lot of work in. And for them to feel like at the end, well, the club just kind of did what they were going to do all along. It's frustrating because you know these people have all got jobs, doing like full time work or education or whatever, and mm. are putting these hours in to try and help other Liverpool fans. So I understand if they're frustrated. I gather we're going to get some news on it today. Um, all I'd say is look past the headline figures. You know, you're going to get people. Saying you're going to get the club saying oh, the, about the lowest prices you can possibly pay. I'd, I'd look into those and see how many games you can buy those tickets for and how many tickets are going to be available. You're going to get people going mad about the highest ticket prices. And again, I'd, I'd probably you know ignore that a little bit as well. What what I'm more concerned is is okay, you're all the new fan who's got a season ticket. You know what what are they getting in for? You know yeah. what I mean? What are, what's the cheapest season ticket? What are the cheapest few season tickets really? Because not every fan can buy the cheapest one. You know, in terms of numbers mm. and and what's the ordinary fan being asked to pay week on week really? So I mean, my advice is then about you, Gareth, is to, is to is to look past the extremes and 
and actually focus more on you know the, the middle ground really because that's what most of us are going to end up paying. Yeah, and also as well accessibility, <coughs> isn't it? I mean, I, I think that I think most fan you know fans will disagree about tickets, and and there's no right answer. Almost where everyone's happy. Yeah. Because you know there's more there's basically more people who want to go the game than there is places to go the game. But I think what what fans have agreed a lot on. You know where there is common ground is that we need more kids in the ground that we yeah. need to try and get the age down of supporters in the ground, and and you know there's some talk that the club will will go some way to try and to address that. But again, I think you should look at the numbers. I think you should look at whether it's a token thing, whether they could have done more, and and also I mean a big question for me is how much does the club have to make from supporters? Yeah, you know they're bringing in a lot of revenue from elsewhere. Everyone knows about this TV money that's going to come in. You know how much do you really need to, to charge supporters and, and if it means you're making an extra million or an extra two million you know that's not a lot of money to a club but but to, to the people going through the turnstile it is a lot of money and, and that's you know and that's why people get annoyed i mean i think it'd be interesting what happens with the cup games for the rest of the season because it's it's surely got to the point now we've played so many games this season mm. it's surely got to the point where they they budget for so many and we've had well over that I'm sure already so if we get through the next round against Dawesburg we've got another round I'd like to see them go do you know what we've made a lot of money off tickets this season we'll make every ticket 10 15 quid or something for adults five for kids you know just as a way of saying nice one you've put a lot in this this year you know you've spent a lot supporting the club you know it's a UEFA Cup game Thursday night we're going to make heavy from really cheap things like that yeah we've got an away tie if we get through against West Ham against Blackburn but if we get a home quarter final tie maybe try and do something again and just just give a gesture to fans and say okay we could make more money Money here, but we want to say nice one for supporting us through this time. Where, to be honest, the footy hasn't been that great. Exactly. I mean, one thing that concerns me, and it, it's it's a quote that Peter Scudamore said uh, of the Premier League a while ago, and basically he he doesn't think he doesn't think of a culture where people go to the game every week. Yeah. He thinks about people just you know treating it like I don't know theatre, cinema, something they go to occasionally. There's people who are essentially locked in in their habits and the way they consume football that they want to go every week. And so therefore, if, if you just keep putting the prices up and up and up, they'll try and find ways to pay them. And most of the time that sacrifices in their family life and what have you. And I, I just don't think that that point gets lost a lot as well. Yeah. You know, it, it's just like, well, it's supply and demand, it's supply and demand. If, if they charge that and people pay it, then it's fine. That's, that's the argument I see from a lot of people. And an argument I don't enjoy particularly, and, and I don't think, you know, I think it's too simplistic to say all the time it's a business. Yeah. Because we're we're not just customers, we're supporters. And the, the culture of football club comes from people going week in week out yeah. and learning about the football team and learning what it is to support the football team. And yeah, there's people around the world who who, who don't get to that opportunity and I appreciate that. But I'm sure if someone's flying from Australia or America or Timbuktu or wherever and coming. You know they want to experience the Liverpool crowd, and, and part of one of the things they're looking forward to, as well as the seeing the team, is you know is the fan culture and experience the atmosphere, that, and the, the flags. atmosphere, and that comes. You know, flags flags don't come from people who go four or five times a season. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not going to make a big massive flag just to take it on a one off. You know what I mean? It's these people who who are going week on week, and that's where you learn about you know the atmosphere. You learn about what it is to be a Liverpool sporter on the cup, and where you learn the songs. And the terrace culture doesn't kind of come out of nowhere. It doesn't grow on the internet. You know what I mean? It grows from people going the game together it goes from people you know, new young people coming to the game and, and kind of learning what it is about to be a Liverpool fan really and, and that, that's in danger of getting lost I think if you've got this idea as you said that the scudamore has got the oh you just kind of dip in and out really it just mm -hmm. kind of removes you know I think as well and as well if you football's in a bit of a you know boom at the moment but to, to think that's always going to be the case I think is wrong you know in 10 years something else might be more fashionable and and everyone will become crying again to the to the lads who used to go every week and kind of you know begging them to come back and you know they might they might say well stuff yeah it's the next generation as well yeah. though isn't it John because you know like I, I've got young children and as it stands I can't take them the game because it's just too expensive the, you know for me to take my lad and get him to sit next to me I'm looking at 50 quid and he's seven years old, so I'm not going to do it. I have done it, um, but you know already he's more interested in other things, and I think that's a little bit sad. But we're going to do an in-depth show on it, aren't we, later on in the week? Yeah, um, tomorrow's unwrap show uh, is is going to be on ticket prices and going to be looking at where we know a bit more about obviously what the club have done, look, looking at you know the, the implications of that, trying to look past, as I say, the headline figures and look at well, what does it actually mean for 
lads who live in Liverpool who don't who don't earn a great deal who want to go week in week out and, and and support the team and it's their life and you know they should be given the opportunities to do that so that'll be uh, tomorrow afternoon and out tomorrow night. Yep. Uh, I, I, I have other stuff, but I think we should leave it there. No, I, we'll just leave it there. I don't want to talk about anything else now. So okay. Stupid. 